Hi, I'm Sean D'Souza, and today we're going to look at something which is the second layer. So, so far you've been doing a wash, and we're going to look at the second layer that you're putting. And this is called, watercolorists call this, atmospheric perspective. They use all these fancy words, but really what we're doing is we're doing a fuzzy background. That's what you're doing. You want to put a fuzzy background because it gives depth to the picture. So when you draw a cartoon, there's always things in the background like a tree, a house, building, hills. We're going to see how you're going to do that. So let's come here and have a look at it. Now, obviously when you have your cartoon, actually let's look at these pictures. So what we're looking at in this picture is this is in the foreground this is in the foreground and there are things in the background and these are very light if you notice the it's just slightly darker than the background so this wash that you've done it's just slightly one level higher if you look here as well you'll find that this is slightly lighter or slightly darker than the background so what's happening is it's giving it depth if we were to take away this depth, we get a picture like this. So what's wrong with this picture? There is nothing wrong with the picture. But what is wrong is that I don't get a feeling for where this person is. I don't get a feeling for whether they're in a room, they're outside. You know, if there were trees, I would know they're outside. And we'll go about seeing how we get that kind of feeling. Now, look, this person is in the forest. And based on the thickness of the paint, we work out that the tree is in front of the person or back or behind the person. This is not very clear and so we're not really sure if this tree is at the front or the back. But what I really want you to focus on is right at the back and you notice that it's a bunch of trees and there's a wood and all that kind of stuff. So what, what this atmospheric perspective does is it gives you that depth. It gives every picture the depth. When you look at most pictures you need to have the atmospheric. So you look at, say, those hills in the distance. You can tell, for instance, that this hill is closer than the hill behind. So whenever you have this kind of atmospheric perspective, see that tree? It's just an indication of a tree, but it gives so much depth rather than just one level, which is, for instance, uh, this has depth as well. but often we'll draw a picture and we're afraid to put in the depth and what you want to do is you want to put in the depth I will do some pictures and I will be afraid to do it as well so it's not just you see here there's depth so it shows you it's going through the thing whereas here when you look at it there isn't much depth there is not much space but there isn't much depth so you can't really tell how close or how far there are hills in the distance you can't tell what it is whereas if you were to take this away it's just a picture but the moment you put it back you know that the person is in a room they have long windows they have long curtains immediately what you're getting is a feeling this looks like an ocean scene something happening here but something in the background would give it depth maybe birds maybe you know a little island in the distance you have to make those decisions you have to you have to decide what am i going to do it and how do you do that well supposing you have your cartoon here so you've got your cartoon here and this is your character and you've kind of done the wash over the character now you have to decide okay what's this character doing is he out on an you know is he on an island so are there hills in the background and what you have to remember is that this is just light so it's almost like a wash on a wash and so if I were to draw hills immediately this becomes more interesting but the problem with drawing hills is how we draw these hills is they're flat hills like this we draw them round and hills and mountains have more drama to them they go up down you know see that so there's a certain jaggedness to them the moment you make it even it's very boring now you might think well this is a little dark but watercolor always dries in the background so you don't have to worry too much 
But what you're doing is you've got this jaggedness up, down, up, down, up, down, and even this has this sense of jaggedness. Again, you don't have to worry if it goes a little over the person themselves. And now what you've created is you've created something in the distance. You know, maybe a little tree here. Birds we'll put in later. But just with a little touch, what you've created is now some depth. And it's just a little lighter, a little darker, I keep saying lighter, a little darker than the background. So you're just doing a wash and a wash. And that is a very interesting or important fact. You can do the same thing indoors. You place the person indoors. and Or maybe you're doing a street scene. So you do a street scene. You draw your, your one-third line. And then you have maybe houses. And you think, oh, this is going to clutter it up. And it looks like that in a pencil. But the moment you put it paint, and this is the beauty of watercolor, or, or just understanding color, is that it doesn't actually get in the way. You'll also notice that I'm tending to do more purple shades. You can do greenish shades or purple shades, but if you go out of your window and you look out in the distance, especially with hills and stuff, you will find that they tend to be blue. So these are just random shapes of buildings and stuff, and they don't get in the way at all. So there you go. That's See how the character suddenly pops up. You can tell that it's a foreground in the background. So what did we learn in this? One thing we learned was that as soon as we start to put something in the background, far out in the background, it makes a huge difference to the painting because it gives it depth. The second thing is it just needs to be marginally lighter or marginally darker than the background. So it's like a wash and a wash. And don't be afraid because we'll get darker colors as we build up this painting. The third thing is that the jaggedness, notice that the mountain is up, down, up, down, up, down. The jaggedness really counts. The break in the horizon really counts. Look at the way I've drawn these, these buildings. They're going up, down, side, down, up, down, up, down, down, suddenly up. And so it, that breaks the horizon instead of just one after the other. So that's it. That's what you have to do for this week. You spend your time creating that distance. And then you don't have to throw away these pictures because you're going to use them later as we build up the painting. So you get more and more practice. But for this week, that's all you have to do. Do your drawing, plan what's going to be in the distance, and make sure that it's slightly darker than the background, that the background wash. So now you have depth to your painting. And you've actually learned a really good thing You've learned something about values. We won't go into it right now, but that's really what you're doing here. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye.